Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. As the title suggests, I am going to be discussing this year's participations of Melody Grand Prix 2022. I gotta say that I have heard the songs prior to this recording and I thought that I would be brutally honest about my opinions. And I will do them in order of each heat and then the pre-qualifiers at the end uh, because I frequently love Eurovision. I love Melody Grand Prix. I have been following since 2004, um, and I was getting really, really into it in 2013. It's like a bug, you know? When that bug hits, it's like, oh, you gotta listen to the songs, you gotta discuss the songs. I've done this with friends and families all over the years. Uh, but this time I was asked to do a discussion on a on YouTube uh, because I did start the YouTube channel last year uh, I figured it might be appropriate to also talk about them uh, here as well uh, I just had to express like this is my opinions you might have a different opinion uh, than what I have and that is totally fine uh, and uh, yes I respect your opinions and I hope you have the courtesy to respect mine so just to start with it we're gonna start into heat one and the first song is Mira Craig, we're still here. Now, I know Mira Craig from back in the 2000s with her unique deep voice and her exotic rhythm, you know, rhythms, which were apparent even here in We Still Here. Just go listen to her songs Headhunt and Leo and you'd understand the connection. She's already always had this sound with her. It's kind of the same, to be honest, so it's nothing new. But this is probably it's not one of my favorite acts this year. Uh, it's a very decent song, it screams Eurovision. It's definitely Eurovision sound. Um, probably not what you'd expect coming out from Norway, but there is something with it, kind of reminds me like uh, Russian uh, Russia from last year, like Russian Woman. I think that was the name of it. it it's kind of having these like independent, strong female voices in their acts. There is something about the na 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 na, right? Uh, like we, we hear it in a lot of songs. This is a Eurovision song. It might be the weakest in the first heat. But who knows? Next one, Frude Vassil Black Flowers. Alright, perhaps I was a bit too quick to call out Mira for being the weakest here, as a might hand the award over to dear Frode here. I do not understand the lyrics at all when he sings, We keep justify your pain when we refuse to take the blame. What is going on here? Like, so what, what does that mean? I just can't get my head around that. Uh, it might just be something that I missed in the lyrics or whatnot. Uh, also, there is way too many we are, we are, we are for my taste. I've heard from a couple of people that they, like, it reminds them of Muse, but I'm not sure if I want to use Muse as an example for, for this, but I do see where they're coming from when they're mentioning this, uh, so that is fine. Uh, he does have a good voice. I mean, he did backup vocals for both Kaino and Alexander Rybak. Uh, if I recall correctly, so he definitely has a great voice and it's apparent here as well However, the song itself it kind of reminds me like Say an average movie from the 2000s and this was like yeah, this is the song. This is a movie song uh, And it kind of just stops there. It's uh, It's old. It's kind of dated but I mean in heat of like uh, 21 or like uh, national finals of 21 songs all of them can't be on top and this one just falls a bit flat uh, in my opinion so I'm sorry about that next song is Trollfest dance like a pink flamingo Gonna dance like a pink flamingo. 
Okay, time to be positive for a change. Yes, this song is actually one of the songs that I truly enjoy in this year's Melody Grand Prix. The reason is, and it's going to be apparent throughout the this one, is that it's just quite on the contrary from everything else in the competition. While most of them are like friendly radio pop or ballads, this one is loud, and it's proud, and it's absurd. Exactly an entry that is just so much fun in Eurovision and in Melody Grand Prix uh, itself. While I'm not a huge metal fan in general, I can enjoy a great track. With most of the other e entries being like the friendly ones, as I just mentioned, this one is just a really, really good time. Uh, so, you know, if you want a really good time, you gotta dance like a pink flamingo, baby. Uh, so the thing about this one is that I actually remember it. Like, when I go through these 21 songs, I've done it for quite a while now, uh, because of this bug that just bites me each year. And this one, I, I come back to it. I remember it. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not just because of the screaming, but it's because of the chorus. The chorus is just so much fun. It's just absurd. Absurdity for the win in Melody Grand Prix. So while I'm not a huge fan of the screaming uh, thing, uh, if I squint my ears, I can imagine it being a squeaky rubber chicken. And for 40 seconds, I can forgive that for a bloody good time to Melody Grand Prix. And I would have said this is the sure shoeing qualifier for the first heat. But, however, the next song, Elina Noelia, Ecstasy. Outside of Trollfest's Dance Like a Pink Flamingo, I really, really like Ecstasy. <coughs> the song, Ecstasy. Elina Noelia got a great voice and I think it truly shines in this song. I do not know where to place it in the pop ballad category as of yet, but it's probably one of my favorites of the bunch this year. And uh, if she can do it live, if she can sing this song live, that could blow my mind. It could even have a chance of winning the whole competition. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of pop ballad type of songs this year, but there is just something about the melody, the vocals, I, I remember it, and here is why, and it's, it's very, very weird. When it comes after the chorus, there is like an instrumental uh, music melody part. Uh, it sounds like a World War II siren alarming in the pouring rain. Now, that's one of the weirdest things that I've written down, and it's one of the weirdest things I've said and yet heard. <laughs> or, I mean, it... I don't know why, but it's just weird. But the crazy build up into the uh, chorus when she goes like super high, yeah, uh, it reminds me of Kingdom Come from by Demi Lovato and Iggy Azalea, and it's really good. It's a really good song. This one by Elena. Um, so if Trollfest would not go to the finals and it's Elena, then I hope the other one will be the wild card joke of the year because. Two of my favorite songs in the first heat. I don't want any of them to go. So that's gonna be hard. But over to heat number two. All right, second heat, and we start with Lily Low, Bad Baby. Now, this is epic uh, right from the gate. It's rock and it's making me think of Wigvam. The lady is pretty rock and roll, got a great cool voice, and the melody would even make the Green Bone Jovi turned on. So, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> how about the lyrics? I cannot for the life of me understand how anyone would love to be called a bad baby. And when that's not repeti repetitive enough, Red Baby, aha! What does badass and babies got to do with each other? I don't know. I would just rank it cool, but with diapers. Um, and I know baby's a term of used like 
babe and romantic settings, but I just can't unhear it. Outside of that, if the staging is great live, it might be an entertaining act for sure. However, with the high pressure of this contest, I believe it will be difficult for it to win. In my opinion, yeah. Next. Next song, Stefan Jakobsen with me tonight. In the storm and in the night, I need you to hold me tight. Let me know that you are with me. I just love his deep voice. Uh, let's just get that right in there right now. I'm not a huge fan of country as a genre. Any melody Grand Prix, it might be a bit boring or yeah, maybe very uh, low, kinda. Um, but this song is not boring at all. Uh, with a contrast to the other songs in the competition this year, it's actually a breath of fresh air. Uh, look at that! Me defending a country song in Melody Grand Prix. Not that I dislike country, because I don't, but it's not my preferred genre. This one is like an epic western. You got the deep voice, you got the whistle, and the epic stormy scenery out of there, building up to a great sing along chorus. I think it's a very good entry this year, and it's like it might elevate. Uh, due to the genre differences that this might stand out a bit more. Uh, do I think it's gonna win? Probably not. But I would not mind if this went to the finals um, from this heat, for sure. Next one, Farida, Dangerous. Here we go! One of the dangerous ballads of this year, and yes, I know what I did. Farida has a great voice, and I like the dark theme uh, ballad of this one. It's similar to Death of Us by Elsie Bay uh, in a few ways, and I believe you either like this one, you like that one, or maybe even like both of them. So it's kind of like they're similar, but not as every song is, but there might be a bit similar that they repel each other, if you get what I mean. It's kind of like, oh yeah, but they're so similar, which one to pick? And the divide might just kill one another. Uh, and some might even think, oh, well, they're all alike, so let's go for something different. So that's something I think about it. Uh, she has a great voice. I've never heard of the artist before. Um, the melody itself also gives me a bit of James Bond vibe, which is a really, really good thing. Uh, it could absolutely win Melody Grand Prix and be sent to Eurovision. It's it's that good. It's really that good. Um, but outside of the, some of these uh, notes that are going down, I can't really like. It's not stuck in my head. Uh, it's I don't remember it. Uh, that well after listening to all these songs uh, because it's very similar in the pop and the ballad genre but outside of that I think this might even be some sort of a masterpiece in some regard so uh, good luck Farida I think you're gonna do well and the last one of heat number two Daniel Lucas Kvele Talk Daniel Lucas is one of two Norwegian song uh, entries this year, and all I can truly say is that it's such a friendly pop song. I can see this one doing well at Petre, uh, but I'm kind of confused what it's doing in Melody Grand Prix. But then again, not, because it's basically what Sweden has given us uh, time and time again. It's very similar in some vein to I Can't Go On or Dance You Off. Um, other than they're in English, but it's kind of the same pop vibe uh, I get from it. Now, the drawback in Eurovision for me about this song is that it is sung in Norwegian, and yes, I know a lot of people would like uh, more ethnicity uh, in the veins of, say, Norway. Uh, people would like more Norwegian sung uh, in the finals or in their songs, but it's a very risky move. Um, because the last time we sent something in Norwegian, I think, was in 2006 with Christina Gulbransen, Alvedansen, and even that song was translated to English. I don't remember if it was 
so after the finals or not, but uh, we haven't done that since then. Uh, and I think it's a very risky move um, for any country really to go with that. They have won, but you have to be really, really good. The thing is with this song, um, in this heat, it's like we have a rock song, we have a country song, we have a ballad one and this friendly radio pop. Uh, it's a very diverse competition in this heat and I don't know for the life of me know where this will go. All I know is that it's a very difficult competition and it might be very difficult for Daniel Lucas in it uh, as one of 21. Outside of that, what is he going to do on stage? Who knows? I hope it's going to be enjoyable. I think he's going to. I hope he's going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's it's a good song. It's not my favorite. Far from it, but it's not bad. Right over to heat number three. Okay, we're starting with Marty Bella. Your loss. Okay, this one is so difficult to describe. It's like an explosion of panic at a disco meeting Lady Marmalade with a hint of Taylor Swift meeting Iggy Azalea's Black Widow and sprinkle some Avril Lavigne on top of that. I do not even know to heck how to explain it other than shooting some confetti into the sky, trying to collect the pieces, the pieces go through your fingers, and now there's a mess on the floor. What happened? Yeah, that's the best way I can explain this song, really. Uh, it's a beautiful voice. The, the song itself, what even is it? Is it pop, rap, soft rock, indie, alternative? I cannot comprehend it. Therefore, it's not easy to place. I say somewhere in the middle because there is a lot of elements I like in it but then it's like oh I want to be this oh I'm gonna be that no wait this 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 and you're like where yes even with my ADHD this is crazy next one Uda Gudrunsen Hammer of Thor Right, this one is epic in the way of the instruments. Uh, the intention seems to lay heavily on the drums. And I expect and hope that this on the stage, live, will elevate the performance. Uh, because Oda's vocal is great, as most of these artists in MGP. There's not really bad vocals uh, in this selection. It's really, really top notch. But it's very repetitive. The lyrics. It's not all that. Uh, she's basically just uh, repeating how proud she is that she stole something. She stole a hammer from someone and she's just really, really cheeky about it. She's a thief. That's what I got to say. The stage, uh, basically, I have to see it on stage, and the performance there will really determine if I like the song or if it's just so so. Uh, at this point, I don't know. Next one Stula me skor yatter. This one is the second Norwegian sung song, and it is yet another radio pop! Oh, come on. And worst of all, if, if you want to say it like that, it's so similar to so many other radio pop songs in Norwegian. If you have heard either of the following, Christian Christensen, kan du lære meg? Fredrik Domås, bli hos meg, or Sondre Justas, riv hjertet, or ikke som de andre, then you have heard this song as well. It's pretty much the same. Which makes it less appealing in the contest. I might add it to my pop playlist, but in regards to Melody Grand Prix and Eurovision, this one is easy to forget. Next one. Vilda met Titans. He 
here we are again with another well-produced pop ballad in this year's Melody Grand Prix. And out of the female pop ballad entries, I think Vilda drew the shortest straw uh, when it came to the song's excitement for me. Yet again, another wonderful song that I would add to a lighter party list, maybe a pop list. Uh, but the competition is so tough this year that this track just does not sit with me. Like, I can listen to it a lot of times, uh, including the other songs, and the most memorable thing about it is, like, it has some sort of Lion King vibe. I get a really uh, huge feeling about the Lion King movie when I hear this song. So that's something, at least. I mean, it's so, like, yeah, I'm just repeating myself here by the vocals are great. It's a very well-produced pop song. I can hear it on the radio. It reminds me a little bit of Ellie Goulding, if I want to go there. But yeah, it, it's not that different from the other competitors this year that it's really hard to justify this one, in my opinion. So, yeah, this, this heat is very, very difficult. Um, it might win this heat, however. That, that's all I can say. Uh, so yeah, Vilda, good luck. I hope you're having fun on stage because it is actually a really fun song, but I like others better. That's my opinion. Love you. Heat number four. Oh my god, here we go. Alexandra Junir Hasta La Vista. Alexandra Yulner got a great song for sure, and her vocals are good, and here we go again. However, <laughs> doing Latino pop has never really gone well for us. We had an international downhill in 2007 with Guri Skanke, uh, Con Bailar Comigo, or something like this. And uh, we also tried in Melody Grand Prix with Alejandro Fuentes, who did not win. So there was that. And we also had other exotic rhythms uh, with an international downhill of Stella Mwangi. Uh, and another one who died in Melody Grand Prix, which I thought was super fun, which was Circus Eliasson with I Love You Te Quiero. Uh, when I mentioned downhill, I just mean like they didn't even qualify for the finals in Eurovision. We died in the semifinals and... As a huge fan of MGP and Eurovision, that stings. So Latino pop, exotic rhythms, usually does not bode well uh, for us here. So do I think Alexandra Juner would change this track record with a name that reminds me of Serbia's 2020 song? Hasta la vista, baby! Well, no, not really. I think the song is super catchy, oh my god, it's catchy, and it really makes me want to, uh, like, I want summer here, it really makes me miss summer. But for Eurovision, I do not think it's what we should send to Eurovision, but then again, that's just my opinion about it. Next song, Maria Moon, Fly. I gotta say, when I first listened to this track, I really loved it, and I thought it could have come higher onto my list. But after listening to all the tracks over and over, like, like 10, 15 times, the only thing I remember about this one is the epic folk melody and the chorus. The chorus was pretty good. Uh, but other than that, it just doesn't stick. It just doesn't stick around. I uh, have seen a lot of comments from other reactors um, on Melody Grand Prix and this song, and some of them are saying that if this was sung in Norwegian, it would be better. And this is the exception I think, yeah, actually, I think it would be much better because of the folky music, the fantasy aspect of it, that would just elevate some sort of, uh, like, fantasy adventure. Uh, Norway, basically, uh, storytelling. 
So there is that. Uh, her voice reminds me a bit of the Norwegian artist Bettina Settlitz, which is also not a negative, it's a uh, positive in my book. So yeah, it's an enjoyable track, but I wish it would take me higher, but it doesn't, unfortunately. Over to the next one, Kim Vigor La Melodia, or La Melodia, or probably the same thing I just said. There is something with this song that is decent. There are elements that work, but it's not enough of it. I'll try to picture my feelings towards this song. There is this man whom is going to take you on a journey, but the journey ends in Bergen, and the man starts singing to himself in the rain, and I've lost us completely. I mean, he seems happy in his own mind, so I will applaud him for that, but the song does not reach the highest mountains, and the chorus sounds so unfinished, just like humming. I cannot explain it better than that, but if he were taking us on a bigger trip uh, of Norway, I uh, would hope he at least landed in Alta, because it's higher up. Next one is Sofia Fjellvang, Made of Glass. exactly how I feel about this song. Another artist that I have never heard of, doing an amazing ballad, with a great voice. What I do enjoy with it is that it's like happier ballad, uh, in contrary to Dangerous, for example, which is more like a darker ballad. Um, I do love how it continues to build in the second verse and how it just continues this way. While it sounds beautiful, I still do not know where to get this song distinctively uh, stuck in my head. It's, oh yeah, another masterpiece. Wait, wh how did it go again? Um, y yeah, it's kind of what I get. It's, it's beautiful, but it's forgettable at the same time, which is such a shame. I, I mean, it's a strong contender for this heat, so I believe it will be doing very well to getting to the finals. But then again, how many ballots are we gonna have in the finals? Steve Carlson, please, for the love of variety. Variety? Anyways, love this song, but wish I... <laughs> Got him all stuck in my head. Right, over to the pre qualifiers. Time for the pre qualifiers, the ones that doesn't have to battle, those who just go straight to it. Why it's like this, I don't know. Probably because of variety in the finals. But then again, why these and not the others? Who knows? Okay, anyways, we're gonna go with North Kid, someone. Emerko have been asking us, the fans, each time after Melody Grand Prix about what band and or artist we would love to see try their hands at the competition next year. And for three years, I have requested North Kid. And finally, they are here. They are here with yet another ballad. <laughs> And there is no denying that Bilal has a great voice. Uh, personally, I like to think of Bilal as one of Norway's best vocalists. After his magnificent work in Stjernekamp, I've been a fan of his and North Kids ever since then. However, no matter how well he sings and the band plays, it still reminds me so much of Belgium's entry from 2013, Roberto Bellarosa's Love Kills. Too much for me to say or have this one as a favorite this year. The melody is good, the vocal is good. I hope uh, it's gonna be great with the staging live because it really needs to do more to stand out because right now it's just a really, really good pop song. Uh, so it's unfortunately not my favorite this year. Sorry guys, I still love you though. Next one, Subwoofer, give that wolf a banana.
Now, this is the absurdity that I wish I would love, but I do not, kinda. It's like Vidar Villa took an English course and met the nephews of Daft Punk on Safari in Trøndelag. The song itself is super catchy, it's cheesy, but as most of the other international reactors say, it is a bop. Yeah, it is a bop, and each day uh, further and closer to each semifinal and the day that passes, I like it even more. Yeah, it's growing a lot on me though. So I'm probably going to be a huge fan of this song uh, when the finals uh, arrive. But right now it's it's good, but it's not the best. Uh, I kind of feel like the most exciting aspect of this memorable act is who is under the masks. I really hope that at the end of their stage act, they hire Celia Nunes to scream, TAKE OFF YOUR MASKS! Because in Norway, Maskurama is still going. Next one, Christian Ingebrigtsen, Wonder of the World. Here we go, yet another quality produced ballad. This time it's one quarter of a one to perform. This one is my mother's favorite entry this year. And I understand exactly why, because it's what she loves. A beautiful romantic ballad with violin stringing along. However, this is nothing new. The formula has been done since Johnny Logan took his victories in the 80s, and it's been done each decade to variety of success, but mostly never truly had the success since then, uh, in my opinion, of course. Uh, I do like the song, but I do think there are far better opinions uh, or options for us to pick this year. Sorry, and I love you, Mom. Next! Annalisa Komoji, Queen Bees. Queen Bees. If they don't like it, they can kiss our I cannot. Oh my god. I'm um, sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to be a bit harsh here, just caution. I cannot for the life of me understand why this is a pre-qualifier. Now, that might be the hardest verdict of this year, but I do not get anything from this song at all. It's kind of just there. Annalisa got so much energy and a spectacular voice, so why this song? I do not get anything out of it, and I know that I am very strict on my opinion here, but this competition is super strong this year, and everyone can be on top. What could I say? Outside of what's already been said about her great voice, is that the trumpet aspect at least? It reminds me of the song We Know Speak Americano by Yolando B. Cool and D. Cup. I'm sorry, Alisa, I'm still your fan. But not my favorite this year. I know I'm harsh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Last one Elsie Bay death of us Once I heard this song I gave it a six out of six but what I cannot shake out of my head is how it sounds like the vocals of Aurora singing on Lana Del Rey's Young and Beautiful. Both of those statements to me are pure compliments, because I love both, and it's so bizarre. However, even if they sound alike, I still really love this entry and her voice. I believe the vocals of Elsie Bay is something to be on the lookout for in the times to come after Melody Grand Prix. I believe that this song could win the whole competition, and I would not mind at all. I believe Elsie could do well in Eurovision, and as of now, it is on my top three. Alright, now before I let you go, I'll just want to say that creating a list is difficult in this Melody Grand Prix, because a lot of the songs are growers and need time to sink in. At some point, I'm having to give that wolf a banana in my head, and the next day, I'll have Kvela talk. Then it's Hasta la Vista, or the Trumpets of Queen Bees. 
It's an explosion of so many different ideas, creative ventures, and expressions that I truly love. And it's the passion behind her craft that often is what I care the most about. I love this year's entry of Melody Grand Prix, and I think it's super difficult to rank just one. I will say that there are a few songs that I believe both grows on me a lot and that it's difficult to say where they land. And even if they're mentioned now, it does not mean they are the top of my list. Um, but they are what I really enjoy in the context of Melody Grand Prix, and I think both stands out and would be an interesting act to potentially send to Eurovision. So, with best regards, we got Elina Noelia with Ecstasy, Trollfest with Dance Like a Pink Flamingo, Elsie Bay, Death of Us, Subwoofer with Give That Wolf a Banana, and Farida with Dangerous. I hope you've enjoyed my discussion on this year's Melody Grand Prix entries, and I hope you look forward to the semi-finals and the grand finals as much as I do to see who will come out on top. Please share your opinions in the comments, uh, and like this video if you enjoyed it. With that, like, bless you, have a great time, and goodbye.